so first of all, when you come to hard news stories, the major thing which you report about are breakthroughs. Anything new, advanced technology, advanced uh, experiment, new finding, new cure, all of this comes under breakthroughs and that comes under your hard news stories. So anything related to science policy, funding, uh, any, any kind of conflict in science, like you know, where some kind of uh, finding has been debunked by another team of scientists when they say that no, this has not been done correctly. In fact, there was a report recently about how one author, one scientist had to retract so many years of research work because one person, one very vigilant person found out she had been fabricating data for all her studies. They found it in one paper and they they just went on checking back, 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 again more and more years further back and they found that in all of it, you know, she had used the same photographs with some Photoshop and that is what she had been reusing for multiple papers and in the end, she had to be removed from her post, she had to retract all her papers, all her scientific work. But what is the impact of this? Can somebody tell me? When somebody fabricates data and when somebody uh, publishes wrong data, can you tell me what is the impact? So the truth is not identified. Okay. Yeah, right? People lose trust. Good. Anything more? Sorry? Panic. Okay. Disinformation. If the data is too sensitive, it can affect people. It can affect people. All right. Anything else? Have you all seen the tagline of Google Scholar? Have you seen this Google Scholar? Have you ever used Google Scholar? Yesterday. Yeah. What is? Okay. Somebody used it yesterday. Sorry. In the lecture. Okay, what did you know it is used for? Why do you use Google Scholar? To find research articles. Okay. Okay, why do you find them? Yes. So, there is a tagline for Google Scholar. Very good. Please sit down. Uh, there is a tagline for Google Scholar which says, Stand on the shoulders of giants. That means, you take the work of much established scientists before you to find something even better. That is the point. Now, if somebody before you has done all the wrong things, has fabricated so much of data, has manipulated data, and they have published papers, and you refer to that work, and you go on. Imagine the kind of impact it will have. It's not just you. Imagine how many people would have been referring to that manipulated work. That is the scale of impact one wrong step in science can have. Okay, so this was just uh, one example I wanted to give of the kind of news which you can also be a part of science communication. Yes. Uh, see, the thing is that actually, uh, this is why peer review exists actually. Why? Because we, uh, we don't publish directly. When we publish our research work, it goes to one or two or sometimes three other researchers in that field whom we don't know. We don't know who they are. It goes to them and they review your work and if they find something wrong with it, they will point it out. Okay? So, that is what the whole point of peer review is. But, again, if somebody puts up a fabricated photo, okay, or data, they also have no way of finding out if it is correct or wrong. So, the checks cannot be ensured except through personal integrity. We all have a set of ethics to follow. Scientists especially have a huge set of ethics to follow. They have a huge responsibility towards the people. And that has to be followed by them. So it's only when somebody, you know, mostly people don't do such things. It's only when someone does it for personal gain, for whatever promotion they have to show, they have published so many papers and they need a promotion. There are people who do it, but not everybody is like that. We still need to have our faith in humanity and in our scientific community because in spite of such setbacks, we have come this far. 
So we have to believe that not everybody is like this. You may find one or two people like this everywhere. We have to get over it and move on. If yeah. something like this happens, uh, it may raise doubts on other scientific papers also. Yes. So that yes. Is and definitely, uh, actually we have a problem with Indian papers because a lot of it is replication. Uh, you know, uh, it's a problem with the system because when you see, you keep, uh, you give importance to the number of publications you publish rather than the quality of even one published paper. What happens, people try to publish n number of papers. They try to just keep on, so once if they do it on one organism, they do the same thing on a similar organism, the same experiment, and they can publish that same data. Then again on the similar. And they probably do it from what some other foreign author has already done. So India has got this reputation of being a replication copy master, which we need to overcome. Our, we do have a lot of good scientists who are doing good work, but these things also put, you know, pull us back. Because in the international community, our stand is affected, our credibility is affected by such things. You know that we had a lot of, uh, you know, these fake journals, which actually did not have any peer review, where people could publish anything and that journal and that uh, article, research article carried value. But now we have come up with a UGC list of journals. Why is that? It is to prevent such things only. Okay? Yeah. So when it comes to features, what are the areas you can report on? You can always uh, go for something which is not recent as well. Now there are some long-standing issues like climate change, global warming. You can talk about these things at length in feature stories. You can uh, go into a long form of reporting. You can go into their background. You can go into a specific area where it is showing a specific uh, effect. You can, you know, explore any number of possibilities in feature writing, okay? And you can always take up any kind of concept even which is not, you know, currently timely or, you know, news of the day right now. Then you have uh, news on, recent news you can pick up on more analytical pieces, okay? So I'll just show you some examples. Like this is a hard news story on something related to policy, okay? We won't go into the details. Uh, this is another... Uh, example of what I said, a biologist blows whistle on prominent co-author. And then uh, this is a feature story, Marsh is on the move. Okay, so uh, here they're talking about uh, rising sea levels due to global warming. So this was actually a long form of a story. And you can see this uh, title, Marsh is on the move. Does it remind you of anything? Any of you from uh, literature background or something? Okay. Does it ring a bell somewhere? Marsh is on the move. Have you read Shakespeare? Sit down, sit down, no problem. You have read Shakespeare. Have you read Macbeth? Yes. What was moving there? Yeah, but there was a there was a term there. Why? When would Macbeth die? <laughs> yes, that's very nice. That's the right answer. There was this uh, phrase there, the, when the forest of Burnham starts to move, the king would die, Macbeth would die. This was the prophecy by the three witches. You know, they have very subtly given a similar uh, headline here, marshes on the move. Okay? It is signaling the kind of doom which we are moving towards due to climate change, due to rise in sea levels. Bring out such elements. Maybe not everybody will understand, but those who are well informed will understand. And if you are able to reach to a larger audience, people will also understand this pop culture references, your uh, connections. Even if you use Bollywood terminology, I'm telling you, even if you use Bollywood connections, people will at least be interested in reading about it, in thinking about it. Okay, what is this they're talking about? Okay, so use Maybe if you want to use, use cricket references, okay? If you want to explain about something, use anything, any kind of tools which can make your reading easy and interesting, okay? Thanks to the literature major who said, back with dies in the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now we look at another one. Okay, uh, I think this you should be able to answer or if somebody else is interested in poetry, you should be able to answer. 
Solitary otters have a surprisingly rich vocabulary. Solitary otter, any bells ringing anywhere in anybody's mind? Very good. I don't know who, what's your name? Srija. Srija. Very good, Srija. You seem to have a very nice interest in literature. I'm happy for you. So, is it some poetry line or something? Yeah, there's a poem called The Solitary Reaper. Okay? I, I believe it's by Wordsworth. So, that is, uh, I don't know, Srija, you tell me if I'm right. Yeah. Yes? Okay. So, Solitary Reaper is a very famous poem by Wordsworth. And we have used that, you know, rhyming terminology here, Solitary Otters have a surprisingly rich vocabulary. So that is, you know, when people see such things, they immediately get attracted to reading what the rest of it is. That is why I'm trying to bring your attention to these very subtle, uh, you know, elements which make your writing interest. Okay? Then, um, this is another feature story related to some recent news which happened there. Okay? And analytical pieces. You can analyze uh, any current issue in at length to make it a feature story. So this was about the various areas which you can report on. And please remember, health reporting and environmental reporting is very much science communication. Okay, it's not just about technology. It's not just about science, about you know like biology or physics or chemistry, but even environment and health do form a part of science.